Hello again. Um, so, TransCare uh, is a initiative by Sangat. Um, I mean, I think Sangat is the host of it. Uh, it's an initiative by many people, uh, as a collaboration by many people about uh, improving trans healthcare in India. And uh, they've released a set of competencies uh, in their conference uh, last day. So this is a draft which they've shared a PDF of, and we can look at it. So mm, it says uh, so. It's a very small, uh, just sixteen pages document. Uh, draft competencies on trans affirmative health provision for discussion in the conference uh, and. Uh, uh, it starts with a symbolic image, um, as an acknowledgement. The booklet builds on the work in the trans care stream within the initiative for health equity advocacy and research. I hear, this is I hear, um, specifically the MEDED project which happened as several trans came together. Firstly, it draws from, so I think it's the I hear, uh, okay, I don't know who exactly is uh, leading it or started it and all that so I hear is probably the initiative behind uh, uh, the uh, report so it draws from the lived experience of team members uh, built from early ongoing research and advocacy of the team thirdly built from early work by some members of the team in developing competencies for disability competencies which are successfully included in the national medical curriculum disability includes compassionate care so the project, uh, so Sangat is as anchor and host, uh, funding and leadership from University of Chicago and Kasu Medical College is also part of it in the development of competency. You'd like to, uh, there are so many people from trans and non-binary community. Um, we know that sharing a traumatic experience is difficult. Workshops in development um people from almost all of the team members but also specifically recognize ameya kumar rajan negi uh nightly menon gadha shah hari kirtan shreya anand anu aksa deepak hari kirtan khan okay hari kirtan comes twice um all names in alphabetic lot so a lot of people have worked behind uh this book of competencies Rahul Jha is a freelance writer to equal opportunities. Uh, uh, make a fan, pull noodles, the professional letter writer, and remember. Okay, okay. So, draft competencies on transformative health provision for discussion in the trans care. Okay, again, uh, these are the collaborators. That's the team they mentioned. Many people we know from Twitter on this team. Some from Clubhouse. Uh, project team. Okay, University of Chicago. So background. Despite efforts for universal health access, trans and gender non-binary persons in India face unequal barriers in accessing healthcare. A major reason for this inequity is that the health professional education in India largely operates within the gender binary and has not worked to include sexual orientation, gender identity expression and sex characteristics competencies. So G, so GSC characteristics, competencies. Moreover, the medical education pathologizes these identities within the curriculum. Uh, like this probably a forensic textbook where they're talking about uh, being transgender as a disorder uh, or things like that. So, in 2019, the Government of India passed the Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Act, which mandates governments to take measures to review of medical curriculum and research for doctors to address their transgender specific health issues due to inaction recent legal interventions from country like the Kerala HC, uh, from courts of the country like Kerala High Court and Madras High Court have pushed for these conversations to create active change. This has led to NMC to release a mandate for omission of harmful content from the curriculum. Like, do no harm. 
first you know advisory regarding issue of okay so this was all in the news where uh, courts kind of told nmc you can't keep on doing this forever uh, and then we worked on and trans came at a take center stage uh just lack of transformative so basically things are being omitted now as in harmful things harmful and wrong stereotypes are being omitted now and uh, now is the time to add uh, useful things uh, in the sense uh, it's not about uh, just you know uh, erasing the existence of transgender or non-binary individuals uh, it's it's also about um, actively understanding the existence of uh, individuals uh, so on that point uh, they kind of build this so through a systemic participatory and inclusive effort the team developed set up draft transformative competencies on transformative healthcare india for this a series of consultative stakeholder workshops were conducted in delhi manipal and bhopal so um, workshops included uh, uh, people from the community people from healthcare provider background um, so uh, uh, i mean it it will of course uh, strike um, the uh, uh, I that uh, it's not written as the 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 word uh, the 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 acronym LGBTQ is not in the uh, let me do a control okay there is a mention of uh, LGBTQ uh, in a different project of I hear I hear peers for equity but apart from that this whole uh, document is specifically focusing on uh, uh trans and non-binary individuals uh, so i mean it's a uh it's in that sense it's a uh it's a it's an attempt to you know um bring to the front uh, the issues of issues that are specific to um the people from these communities which uh, which are not really addressed when we club um, uh, lgbtq like that in a group so it's not a uh, the the experiences of communities within uh, that umbrella are not unique and therefore uh, uh, it's kind of important to focus on individual verticals of community so they did workshops analysis and then reached these competencies so uh, this was reviewed in the conference and uh, all of that consular workshops so a queer affirmative health person said i remember that when the first trans person walked into my outpatient department i immediately felt that i became this other person that i wasn't really proud of i immediately felt that i became this other person yeah, I wasn't very proud of. It's not trans cured, it's trans care. Okay, I didn't really understand this particular quote. Maybe if I knew the context, it would have been easier. Uh, another question. We require care to be given, which is considered cosmetic for other people, but it is life saving for trans people. Yes. I've had very transphobic experiences in the hospital despite the hospital having had a lot of trans patients asking my old name and asking questions like back when you were a girl how you were that's how they worded it okay uh, there are surgical procedures which are done on cis women but when demanded by people who are gender incongruent are denied because somebody feels that it is not ethically right okay um, then the nurse came and said, I will not put injection to this person, you find someone else. So, um, basically, I think a lot of instances of uh, discrimination in healthcare is uh, being uh, discussed and it's kind of come to the stage for uh, drafting competencies which will help avoid this uh, discrimination and make uh, healthcare a accessible and inclusive uh, space. So, uh 
I'm not very sure what uh, IMG IHP stands for. Okay, Indian medical graduate and Indian health practitioner. Uh, transgender non-binary, double parties, world professionals in the transgender health and Indian personal association for transgender. So, uh, okay, we're back to page one. I mean, page ten. Um, so, a uh, doc. Let's call them medical. A medical should be able to communicate with the. Okay, so uh, because I attended the conference also, I mean virtually, I know that uh, they were focusing mostly on doctors and um, MBBS doctors, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, therefore, I'll just call medical. Uh, uh, so, not nurses uh, or other healthcare workers. Uh, uh, anyhow, uh, so a medical must be able to communicate with the TGNB person in a culturally appropriate manner. Uh, yeah, like <laughs> a medical should be able to talk to someone in a, an appropriate manner. Uh, and what they mean here is that uh, uh, they should be also uh, sensitive to the culture of uh, how a TGNB person might be uh, or the culture that uh, they are coming from in which uh, uh, there are possibly certain uh, practices certain uh, preferences which one must keep in mind so th those are the things uh, the mean and then demonstrate understanding of the unique social experiences faced by uh, TGMB persons and respect their lived, exp lived experience and provide contextualized care accordingly. So, um, be empathetic essentially. Uh, think about what social experiences are faced and uh, contextualize the care according to their lived experience. Uh, according to that, as in give, give some respect and empathy. Describe the facilitators and barriers to treatment seeking behavior unique to TGMB person. So, I think this is a very interesting point because um, if you ask doctors, um, they uh, they will um, a lot of them will say, uh, "Oh, these uh, transgender people, they don't come to they, they, their health seeking behavior is very poor. They 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 are not interested in uh, health or uh, you know uh, their behavior. It's a behavioral issue." Uh, that they do not come to seek care. So, uh, I mean, there is a nice paper uh, about behavior, individual behavior as a determinant of health, um, uh, which I'll link to in the description. But basically, this, uh, this is very insensitive about the backgrounds and uh, the barriers that are faced by a lot of uh, people from various communities and just uh, talking it talking about it in terms of health seeking behavior or treatment seeking behavior is uh, rather insensitive and uh, the competency is about what facilitators and barriers exist uh, which are unique to TGNB persons so that and then develop innovative strategies to make the healthcare of TGNB persons affordable and accessible uh, essentially they are coming a bit into community medicine slash public health kind of field um how do you uh, make healthcare accessible affordable provide healthcare services in a way that is affordable accessible and culturally acceptable uh, demonstrate awareness of all current central and state level government laws policies and schemes in india with respect to tgmb persons and should be able to guide them and counsel them in availing appropriate provisions. Um, <laughs> I think uh, this is uh, this is a uh, this is going to be a bit challenging because uh, uh, even uh, Park textbook uh, doesn't get updated with uh, all policies and schemes uh, as quickly as uh, one would like to. But uh, what it also means is that. Um, it is time that medical education went beyond textbooks that takes years to update and uh, moves to uh, online solutions or things you know a web page where 
all all relevant laws, policies, and schemes are available. I mean, and it should be accessible across the country to everyone. So I mean, it can be updated instantly, and uh, it, it it can do a lot. So those kinds of uh, uh, modern textbooks should also come in to work some of these out. Um, and then demonstrate awareness of available gender affirmative services and assess the gender affirmation needs of a TGMB person while understanding his relationship to their mental health and quality of life. So there are there are numerous um, uh, gender affirmative services uh, available based on uh, what gender identity you uh, uh, have and uh, uh, one must be aware of a medical must be aware of what options exist and uh, what are the trade-offs what are the uh, oh, does the person need all of that like um, there could I could be a trans uh, man and I might not um, you know desire to have uh, uh, masculine features uh, so if I do not need uh, 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 so much of uh, affirmation affirmative uh, treatment or services then um, uh, I mean it's not appropriate to push me to do things either so that uh, balancing that by assessing someone's needs uh, is also important and also realizing that all of this in turn connects to um, their mental health uh, uh, and quality of life. So someone might be too depressed to even ask for gender affirmative services, or they might um, they might be having uh, uh, you know lots of confusions and uh, not be able to uh, express their needs correctly. So so that's where the sensitivity of the provider also comes into play. Now demonstrating awareness of the fluidity and diversity within and the evolving concept of SOGSC framework um, uh, that is that in sense uh, the 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 entire uh, spectrum of um, sexual orientations uh, sexual desires sexual interests gender identity gender uh, expression all of that um, have to be kind of understood by uh, medicals and I think uh, <laughs> there's a bit of uh, uh, what do we say uh, rewriting science that has to be done there in the sense uh, 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 from say biology textbooks we are uh, kind of uh, pushed into this uh, binary notions and uh, uh, it becomes a GK question on uh, you no. Know, there's a question on which uh, species can change its sex or something like that. Um, I mean, the questions. So basically, the foundational idea of sex, gender, these kinds of things have to be um, questioned really uh, critically by. A lot of uh, us and then we have to develop as a society we have to develop a better understanding of what it all means and uh, the present level of understanding is uh, contained in this framework and uh, as and when uh, such frameworks are developed it's important that medicals are up to date with all of that now demonstrate empathy inter interaction with TGMB persons of course Identify the unique healthcare needs of a trans and non-binary person, including but not limited to their mental health, gender formation, and sexual and reproductive health needs. So, uh, I mean, this not limited to is really important because uh, it's not that a trans or a non-binary person is only affected. I mean, comes to a doctor with issue only of mental health or gender or sexual and reproductive. I mean, they also have uh, diabetes, hypertension, thyroid issue, um, COVID, uh, drug side effects, UTI, um, URI, uh, I mean, uh, any kind of uh, issue that, uh, um, you know, work stress uh, or uh, childhood uh, 
what is that the stress, stress uh, post-traumatic stress so i mean of course that might come under mental health but nevertheless uh i mean not every problem of an individual who identifies as trans or non-binary should necessarily be because of that identity i mean it could be because of a different reason right so uh to stop stereotyping that as the only source of uh, health issues is one and uh, that of course comes from pathologizing of these uh, identities right like if you if you think this itself is a disease uh, trans and non-binary identity is itself a disease then of course uh, you uh, you you will think that uh, everything every other uh, disease that a person like that has is because of that particular uh, disease in quotes so uh, that's where pathologizing has to stop and then automatically uh, we start thinking intersectionally demonstrate a commitment to following a patient-centered approach to deliver effective and affirmative healthcare to TGMB persons mm. patient-centeredness treat TGNB person ethically by demonstrating sensitivity and respect for inherent dignity while upholding their autonomy and privacy treat this persons ethically by demonstrating sensitivity and respect for inherent dignity okay so basically um, again uh, respect autonomy dignity empathy treat treat them uh, also as human beings is what it says uh, treat uh, treat us as human beings like why not uh, why would we be relegated to a different uh, class um, demonstrate awareness of their own power and privileges and how it influences interactions and decision making with TGNB persons uh, demonstrate awareness of their own power and privileges and how it influences interactions and decision making with TGNB persons so basically be uh, mindful of the power dynamics in the clinic or in the health care setting uh, the the medico has the doctor has absolute power in uh, in a healthcare setting because that's the design of our healthcare system um, and uh, unless it is perhaps maybe private healthcare heavily um, expensive private healthcare where there's lots of payment even there the doctor has lots of power so uh, that power and the, the background of privileges that the doctors come from so that has to be um, oh uh, medical has to be aware of it and uh, it has to be a factor in decision making so when you're doing shared decision making um, this power and privilege will influence the shared decision making and without the awareness of the how that influences it's kind of uh, hard to actually call it shared decision making it is like coerced informed consent uh, so uh, elicit the preferences needs and support system of TGMB persons in an empathetic manner during history taking so um, ask about where they're from how what, who do they live with uh, what do what what do they prefer to do, do who who do they want uh, to take care of them like who, who is available for them um, do they want uh, admission do they not want an admission uh, lots of uh, issues like uh, are they comfortable with uh, uh, advising bed rest uh, or various different modalities of treatment so all of that I mean it's basically shared decision making but uh, with an acute um, awareness of the uh, unique issues of uh, TGNB persons. So that and uh, it comes to medical spaces and trans. So the first section was about challenges in accessing healthcare. So it was about the uh, interface between um, the community and uh, healthcare or uh, you know uh, in access. So now they're talking about the space itself being. Um, medical colleges medical communities conferences uh, all of them being inclusive so 
uh, a medico should advocate for social link must be able to advocate for social inclusion of tgb persons within medical community and facilitate development of a bias and discrimination free environment for learning work and care persons for tgb students colleagues and patients uh, so this is about affirmative action inclusion um, you know getting people uh, uh, creating a safe and welcoming space uh, within uh, the medical community for uh, people uh, and uh, facilitate development of an inclusive infrastructure for learning work and care portion of TGM uh, in their health care. So uh, here it said um, discrimination free environment for learning uh, work and care portion here it said uh, for inclusive infrastructure uh, for learning working. So basically uh, but discrimination free in mind and uh, also in physical uh, infrastructure educate for uh, uh, not necessarily physical alone <clears throat> it can be even be soft infrastructure like policies um, you know uh, things like <coughs> um, things like say um, let's say there's an award for the best uh, scoring I mean it makes no sense but I'm just gonna come with an example of a policy that's not inclusive okay so there's an award for the top scoring male in anatomy and the top scoring female in anatomy like <laughs> if that's the case then uh, it's creating a software um, infrastructure is uh, pretty bad for uh, someone who is who identifies neither as male or female so so like that I mean I know that's, that was a bad example but I, what I'm saying is it's not just physical infrastructure like toilets that count uh, but also um, the soft infrastructure advocate for inclusion of TGMP persons in wider healthcare fraternity um, support and facilitate the development of an appropriate redressal mechanism for um, for TGMB students, colleagues, and patients. So, redressal mechanisms, demonstrating use of appropriate and affirming verbal and non verbal communication techniques while eliciting relevant history. Uh, lots of things like culturally appropriate language, um, you know, referring, uh, not misgendering someone, um, then um, being sensitive about uh, the various kinds of. Um, um, uh, assumptions that might not hold true uh, assumptions from the heteronormative society that might not uh, see heteronormative society that might not hold true for uh, uh, a person from PGNB community so those kinds of things mm. so basically it's about internal activism in the within the medical community what kind of activism should a uh, medical be doing uh, to do all of that and then current affirmative practice and challenges faced by professionals uh, what is this uh, there should be a research uh, to be able medical should be able to conduct research in a sensitive and participatory manner okay uh, engage healthcare staff and members of an interprofessional team to collaborate for providing inclusive and affirmative care engage healthcare staff and members of an interprofessional team to collaborate providing inclusive so basically um, as a team leader how do how do you engage everyone and make it an inclusive space provide re, provide primary health care services and be able to coordinate care with appropriate facilities by developing an appropriate referral plan and to provide affordable health care services including specialist services so um, a primary health care approach with uh, you know a network of specialists and referral systems and reverse referrals and all that demonstrate awareness about standards of care in care of TGM patients such as WPATH IPATH guidelines and practice gender affirmative care in line with guidelines um, so basically uh, the uh, guidelines would have to go into the textbooks uh, okay that's it so the 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 the, the competencies are rather short um i mean uh, you just make sure yeah that's the end of it so 
basically it's about uh, uh, being a better doctor in the consultation and being a better leader in the community and uh, uh, in a sense an activist within the medical community and being a uh, uh, and some this is a miscellaneous uh, bag I guess uh, bag of ideas uh, provide uh, so basically uh, a lot of I think uh, these uh, competencies are all related to provision of care and uh, except for this section 2 where it's all about uh, changing existing structure um, I think uh, these are pretty great for uh, you know influencing the curriculum influencing the uh, way um, uh, way a person is treated empathy building so uh, one of the greatest things about uh, this uh, competencies is that i mean if uh, such a thing is uh, implemented uh, if and when such a thing gets implemented um, uh, the uh, see things like demonstrate empathy so you can't uh, um, of course you can be empathetic to one kind of people but not another kind of people but nonetheless I mean if you start to empathize with um, someone then there's a good chance that you will start to empathize with a lot of people so um, things uh, that are in this are, are going to be helpful for a lot of people um it's not uh there's not a lot of um you know ground breaking things uh uh in this uh it's i mean if if all of this gets implemented that itself is ground breaking but uh what i'm saying is um it doesn't advocate for example for uh you know doing away with um binary categorization at all like why do we uh, are there um, is, is there a um, anatomy uh, in anatomy for example this was brought up in the conference as well um, in anatomy uh, do they have um, transgender bodies I mean cadavers uh, why 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 is only male and female uh, why is there a bi there's a very clear binary in anatomy uh, even in physiology perhaps a uh, lot of uh, textbooks are still in binary so it doesn't advocate for uh, completely doing away with binary everywhere it's only talking about being aware of uh, that uh, non-binariness and transness um, so I think uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, they tried to make it um, practical to be taken seriously otherwise uh, there's a risk that people will just ignore all of that so uh, they've not tried to like uh, uh, science and data talks about in querying science why 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 do we have categories that are you know uh, science is all about categories right like um, arbitrary categories that too based on some cut of greater than five less than five two categories like what is what is what is so big about five or ten let's say greater than ten is one greater than less than ten is one so very arbitrary categories so these kinds of binaries are there all across uh, uh, science uh, and uh, questioning the very foundations of such science has not been uh, attempted in this uh, competencies and that's good okay uh, I mean that's okay for 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 now uh, so yeah so that's a uh, the set of competencies i hear initiative for health equity advocacy and research is a collaborative initiative of Austria Sangat brings together academies researchers activists practitioners and community representatives conduct participatory research advocacy and education at the intersection of marginalized identities health access and mental health so our values work towards improving equity recognize intersectionality and experience of marginalized recognize lived experience as expertise work in partnership with communities and think about us without us Work towards high quality ethical care, uh, ethical academic scholarship, work towards creating real change through projects. So, it's one of the projects, and other projects are mentioned in the next page. We'll open that. Uh, I hear is an initiative for vaccine equity. Uh, 
study the study and then i hear initiative for health equity uh, okay sabin funded them okay um initiative for health equity service and assistance peers for equity i hear it's peer led initiative where we aim to co-create learning spaces develop a cohort of research education from the lgbtq plus disability communities uh, this will be done through a short digital course and paid mentor this friday the peer led initiative will be researcher advocates so that's nice uh, ps for equity super um cure closing is a workplace initiative support psychosis needs of cure and employees at sangat profile the project connect 20 employees to affordable cure of community counselors involve workplace to learn together about uh discuss among proposed policies to safeguard rights of community so that's interesting uh, Cure Ambassadors aims to set up a network of students faculty across college campuses in India that will facilitate exchange of ideas towards many campuses, places, square foot. Virtual emphasis sensitization, co learning sessions. Uh, Transcript COVID 19 is a qualitative study. Uh, okay, so very interesting projects that are happening under I year. And uh, They are the partners. So we can just look at that I hear page. So I hear this one. Nice. So interesting. Very nice. Okay. So that's it. So these are the competencies. They are on Twitter. I'll also put a link to that uh, in the description. Uh, I think it's still draft so <clears throat> if you have comments or sessions editions we should be able to submit to them okay bye bye